Welcome, Klaus. It's been a pleasure to have you at the Romanian Cultural Institute in Brussels. We will start a series of um, video interviews with the directors of um, National Cultural Institute. And uh, it's me interviewing uh, you as the Danish uh, director of the Danish Cultural Institute. You have a very interesting background. You started as an actor and then you went into politics, you've been a mayor of the city of Copenhagen. And in 2011, you came to Brussels and you are the newest director of the Danish Cultural Institute. I will start by asking you as a former politician, how do you see Brussels? I think many people, at least many Danish people, have an image of Brussels as being a television reporter standing in front of the Berlemont building talking about something goes on in the EU. But then, I mean, coming here, uh, realizing that this is, in every sense, a true European city. You don't find any city in Europe that has such a diversity as Brussels. When you take the metro or you take the tram, you hear Danish, English, French, Romanian, Hungarian, Portuguese. I mean, you hear all sorts of European languages. And you really feel that you are right in the middle of Europe. And secondly, I think it's, it's interesting that you have a place in Europe where so much power is gathered. Uh, and I think it's important that uh, our citizens back home, the Danes and the Romanians and, 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 and the English, that they actually understand that we have made a democratic construction that gives a lot of power to Brussels and they should be more interested in it. If you look on the amount of decisions, I think it's about 70% of legislation is actually being taken and being decided in Brussels. If people knew that, I think they would have a strong interest in, in that. I'm in a non-political job now, uh, and we are not a political organization, but I think it's important for me uh, to communicate to Danish people uh, what actually goes on in Brussels and how it affects every single part of their uh, life back home. I think one of the jobs for, for the Danes is to feel more incorporated in Europe, feel more as a part of Europe, to be more engaged in, in European matters. And that is one of the things that, that I've decided that, 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 that I'll use this uh, position for. You are the newest director arriving, as I said, in Munich in Brussels cluster. Do you feel like an extended family? How do you see this cluster and its role within UNIQ Global Network? I think UNIQ is uh, an extremely important player. Things are moving closer and closer to Europe and more and more pressure on Europe. Um, coming from a Scandinavian country, we have of course the big discussion about the welfare state, the survival of the welfare state. We have a very strong social system in, in Denmark, but it also costs a lot of money. We are a very small country. Uh, we can only, I think, survive in not only financial ways, but also welfare way wise, cultural wise, if we understand that we are part of Europe, uh, that we have to work together. There is, of course, a national identity, but there is also a European identity. I mean, which values do we share in Europe? And, and I, I have to work on that towards my uh, back country, or home country also, because in Denmark there is sort of a tendency to sort of come and say, well, Denmark can do this, and Denmark can do that, and Denmark are the best at this, and Denmark are the best at that. And we are good at many things, but uh, I think it's, it's much more important to, to understand that, that we need each other in Europe and, and that we should, should work on this. As cultural institutes, we have different perceptions of ourselves. In Denmark, I don't necessarily think that the Danish Cultural Institute actually should be a producer ourselves. We should get somebody else to produce, but we will be more than happy to help them to get this funding. And I think that could be a job for you in Brussels. Uh, the creation of European um, Agenda for Culture in mm -hmm. 2007 and its review in 2010 with the Treaty of Lisbon in mm -hmm. 2009 have proven that policymakers understand the importance of culture and cooperation, mm -hmm. cultural cooperation in Europe with the rest of the world, do you believe that the way to move forward is cooperation is people to people? I remember when I got into politics, uh, I was a, a pretty well-established actor in Denmark and a theatre manager and sort of known in public life. And of course there was, I mean, I was elected on a quite strong cultural program. 
but I also have to admit that in my uh, altogether nine years in politics, I moved away from that because it's simply not on top of the political agenda, neither nationally or locally. I mean, you would first look for jobs for people, housing for people, heating for people, food for people, all these things, kindergartens, uh, making sure that growth, the, the, the stability of growth is there. So, so one thing that is unfortunately uh, very sad for culture is that it's an, an area that is very easy to make, very beautiful words about, and big declarations about. But when it comes to the specific funding, it's more difficult. We have to see where else can we contribute. And I think especially in the intercultural dialogue within cities, uh, I think we have a, 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 a strong input here. And I think what culture can do and what art can do is actually to create that space for us where we, uh, where we do get better in saying, I am like I am and you are like you are, but I think we should be friendly towards each other and respectful towards each other. I think we both should mind what we say and how we act and what we impose on each other, but there has to be space for both of us. It might be a very naive perception, but everything starts, at least when you talk about culture, everything starts with you make something and uh, you want somebody else to see it, so you invite me to see it. So then I'll go and say, oh, should I actually go over and see what that uh, Romanian camera is doing? It's pretty interesting actually. And then maybe 10 people come and then it spreads like rain. And that is, I think, the beautiful thing about culture and art that, that it has this word of mouth thing. In, in, in the respect uh, for culture and the respect for art, I think we have to be the ones that sort of fight against bureaucracy or, or fight against. We are also institutions, we are also government funded, but I think we should take the liberty to actually take that role upon us and, and, and try to make a little revolution. <laughs> you make in Brussels is made of 17 uh, yeah. members, 17 yeah. um, different um, cultural institutes, mm -hmm. national cultural institutes, and Shamangas we speak 14 languages. Mm -hmm. You yourself speak several languages. Mm -hmm. How do you see the importance of languages, of early learning languages? I think languages are extremely important. I come from a small language, and I mean, we as Danes, we learn English in school, we learn German, we learn uh, French, you can take Spanish if you want, and I mean, we are used to uh, uh, to have sort of a positive approach to that. One of our great advantages as human beings are that we are able to communicate in a very, very, very nuanced and extremely detailed way compared to the monkeys and the birds and <laughs> the fish. I mean, we can really communicate. And, uh, and that's why we are very close and uh, have computers and uh, have a video camera and everything. Mm -hmm. We run a language school in, uh, in, 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 in our institute and we have some Belgians there going to Danish classes. And I had to ask them one day, why on? Earth, do you go to Danish classes? I mean, why do you want to learn Danish? And then she said, the one lady, she said, well, uh, we're very much into pigeons, you know, pigeons that fly yes. with me, it's our hobby. And uh, my husband and me, we often go to Denmark to meet some pigeon people there. And uh, we've been there many times, but I thought, I would like to understand more, to understand which society it was. And I'm like, well, there you are. I mean, she's basically, she's a quite old lady in her 60s. It's a big, it's a, I mean, that's, it's, that, that, that for me proves that, uh, that, that, that language can be such a big uh, eye, uh, door opener. I have, I'm half Dutch myself, my father come from, from, from the Netherlands, and I decided that I would start by learning Dutch coming here. Very good. Yeah, but uh, the Alliance Française got me captured, so, <laughs> so I start with that. Very good. <laughs> So I start with the French because I have a cheval commencé avec un cours de français. Thank you very much, Claude, yeah. on this very positive note. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. and to be continued. Yeah, good. <laughs> Please, again.